Uh, may I have your attention? If you have a, a beautiful yellow Corvette, you need to move it. Yellow Corvette got California license tags on it. You're in the pastor spot. You need to move it.
We ask that you would stand and receive the bereaved family. Now this I say, dear brethren, that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do it corruption inherit incorruption. But behold, I'll tell you a mystery. We shall not, or we all shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, for this corruption was be changed and this corruption must put on incorruption this mortal shall put on immortality but when this corruption have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? For the sting of death is sin, the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who giveth us victory. Even over death, he giveth us victory through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, beloved brethren and sisterin, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding like Brother Frank did in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that your labor will not be in vain. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From henceforth, yes, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor. For men who do good works like Frank, they shall follow them. For the Lord is a, my shepherd, and I shall not want. Make it me. To lie down in green pastures. He leaded me besides the still waters. He prepared the soul, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil.
celebrating the life and the legacy of Frank Johnson, Jr., Alpha, October the 10th, 1955, Omega, July 22nd, 2021. A life well lived. I'm Pastor Randy Harris. I will be your officiant for the service today as well as your master of ceremonies. And prior to us having our crowning ceremony, let me just give everyone some instructions. Uh, this family has been through a lot, and we don't want to belabor this program. But at the same time, we want to give Frank his due diligence, and we want to celebrate his life as well as his legacy. So if you're on the program, be cognizant of the time limits that the family has graciously put on this program. If they ask you to speak, please do so in the allotted time that you've been given. If you not view the remains of our beloved brother, we ask that you would do so at this time because once the casket is closed, it shall not be open again. Amen. If you're coming in and you've not viewed the remains of our beloved brother, we ask that you do so expeditiously at this time. Amen. completes the viewing part of our
we will follow the program expeditiously as it is prayed that this time we will have our crowning ceremony
Let us all say amen. To the family, to my family, friends, far and near. I would like to say welcome you to this homegoing celebration of my dear beloved brother, Frank Nitty Johnson, Jr. I be coming to you from the book of Psalms, the 23rd. And it reads like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys, the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy prepare a table before my, in, in the presence of my enemy. Thou nourish my head with all. My cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Also be coming to you from 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. And it states in this manner that for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. His fall, there laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the last day, and not to me only, but unto them also that love his appearance. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Master in heaven, we come humbling ourselves before your mighty hand, coming to your throne of grace. Truly, we need your grace and your mercy each day. Lord God, we owe it all to you. We exalt your name. We lift thee up, Lord, for you are God all by yourself. Lord, you are our source. You are our help all the time. God, we lift up this family right now, our family. We bless them, Lord. We pray for your comfort for them, Lord. In times like these, we need you, Lord. We need an anchor. Father, in times like these, trouble on every hand. But yet, God, you are still in control. In spite of what it looked like, Father, we know, Lord God, we walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, lift up this family that only you can do, Lord. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for, Lord. But your Holy Spirit searches our minds, Lord. Sometime, Lord, he intercedes for us, Lord, with utterance that cannot be heard. Lord, have mercy. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, where we're weak and build us up where we've been torn down. Father, those that are weak, Lord, please strengthen them in their inner spirit. Help those that are strong. Help to bear the firm of the weak. Teach us, O oh God, to love one another as you first loved us. 
and you gave your only son for us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. It's through Jesus, Lord, that we live through him whether we die. Lord, as we go to our seat, Father, just continue, Lord God, to lift them up. Hold them in the palm of your hand, Lord. Let your love be perfected in them. And Lord, when it's all said and done, Lord, we'll hear your welcome voice says, well done. Thank you for this, brother, my dear brother, my dear cousin, Lord, Frank Johnson, Lord, we have touched so many lives. Lord, just strengthen their family in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen. At this time, we have recognition of, of ministers. If you are a minister, we ask that you would stand where you are um, to make this family aware that you're here to support them during the hour of bereavement. Amen. Come on, let's give all of these men and women of God a hand clap of praise. Also at this time, it calls for the solid reading of the obituary. And I won't insult anyone's intelligence here because the first thing we do when we get the obituary is that we read the obituary. Amen. And also the combine the family of the Frank Johnson and, and the Ford family would like to acknowledge and thank you for your expression of sincere appreciation and, and gratitude that's been extended to them during their hours of sympathy and acts of kindness that have been shown to them during the loss of their loved one, Brother Frank Johnson. They want you to know that they are truly grateful for your prayers, your calls, your cards, your flowers, your gifts of love, and your words of comfort. A special thanks to all of the medical staff, especially the third floor and the second floor of ICU at uh, Christus St. Francis could bring the hospital, Miller and Hill, the funeral directors, Pastor Joshua Jordara and the Zion Hill Church family, Pastor Randy Harris and the Mount Triumph Church family. Also, we have a resolution from the Rapids Parish Police Jury and it reads condolences to Mr. Frank Nitty Jr. and to the family. Wishing sincere condolences to the family of Frank Nitty Johnson. May you find comfort in your hours of bereavement and know that our prayers are with you. Presented to the family this 30th day of July, 2021. Oliver Ali Overton, Junior District F. Uh, would you stand, Brother Overton? Amen. He is here today from the Rapids Parish Police Jury. At this time, the program will proceed as printed.
Lord, you really been good to me. When I was down and out, didn't have a dime. Lord, you made a way for me. Every one of those times you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Hey, now, Master, you've been a mother for me. And Master, you've been a mighty good friend. Troubles come, you wipe the tears from my eyes. I could have, should have, would have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But you made it. Get back and behave. You brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Y'all look too quiet for me. If you knew Frank Nitty, Frank Nitty made noise. He had a thundering voice. When he went somewhere, he celebrated where he was, and everybody knew that Nitty was in the house. So y'all a little bit too quiet for me in this place. Come on, let's thank him. I know it's hard, but, but we can still thank him. I know we didn't want him to go, but we still ought to thank him because he's good to us. Come on, Brother Ron. If you've been good, would you stand on your feet and say thank you?
give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Oh, y'all feeling me now. I believe y'all on my street now. That's the nitty I know. I can feel his presence in the place right now. Amen. At this time, we'll have our family uh, tribute. We have a mic right here to my left and your right. Um, Frank Jr., Frederica, and uh, Shannon uh, Adams. Amen. Would you come in that order? And as you make your way there, um, I have a text from Alfred Rachel, who is a great baseball player in his own right, um, along with Frank. Um, and he's on the COVID protocol, and the doctor has not released him, and he wants me to express to the family that his regrets for not being here, and he asked me to express this to the family, ask they come and do their tribute. He said, never regret a day uh, in your life. God gives you happiness. Bad days give you experience. And the worst days of your life will give you a lesson. And the best days will give you a memory like he gave me with Frank. Johnson. So he says that you are in his prayers and, and on behalf of all of his brothers and all of his teammates in that award winning uh, state baseball championship, he extends his love on behalf of them to you. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Family tributes. Amen. Um, Ms. Uh, Ladrica, followed by Ms. Shannon Adams, and then the Frank Johnson Jr. Amen. He was a talker, a leader, an athlete, active in his church, community, and politics. He knew a lot about everything. His presence was strong, and his voice was mighty. When he spoke, he demanded attention, and whatever he said was worth listening to. If you ever listen to him speak, he was a poet in his own right, versed with words and thought that all so eloquently intertwined. He could talk for hours. We could talk for hours. But, what, but beyond what he was and who he was to everyone else, he was a father. I watched my first basketball and football games with him. He taught me how to play dominoes and spades. He taught, I mean lectured me about boys and the difference between a woman and a lady. He used to read my poems and my writing and told me I had a lot to offer the world. He taught me to be a thinker and listener and the power of knowledge and awareness. <clears throat> Growing up, he filled in my missing pieces as a father figure. I am grateful that he was a part of my foundation as well as throughout my life. Today, I celebrate Big Frank. Today reminds me that life is truly too short. Love on each other while there's still time. Forgive and choose joy. He will be missed.
Good morning, saints. It's an honor to stand before you this morning. I thank the Lord for this day that he has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I would like to honor the members of clergy, pastors, preachers, deacons, evangelists, prophets, and teachers. I thank you all for your continual diligent labor of love and service to the children of God. Thank you for a time like this. It's, it's very, I just, I'm thankful that you guys are still in place. I'm going to take this time to honor and extend my condolences to Vera, my sister Pam. I want you two ladies to know I appreciate the example you set before us during this time of great loss. You two truly exemplified the coin phrase of a class act. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your understanding. It really speaks volumes to the type of man that Frank was. He was a man of order. Everyone knew their place that was in his life. There was never anything to assume. He, there was always a place for everyone, and they understood that. So thank you, ladies. I would also like to extend my condolences to all of Frank's children and grandchildren. May the Lord continue to strengthen and bless you for many years to come. I stand before you this morning with the task of sharing my heart and honoring the life and legacy of Frank Johnson, Jr., a.k.a. Big Nitty to most. <laughs> Frank became a part of our family over 20 years ago. He was not only my brother-in-law, but he was my mentor and my teacher. You know, as an adult, I was taught not to discuss religion and politics in certain settings. However, politics and the word of God were primarily me and my brother-in-law's longest conversations. We rightly divided the word oftentimes over the years, and we enjoyed it. He was not only a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word as well. Many scriptures come to mind when I think of my brother-in-law, like Matthew 16, 24, and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I can tell you many times I witnessed people bringing monetary offers to my brother-in-law to sell out. He was only sold out for Jesus. Amen. That's the only sellout he was. Amen. He was a great mentor. Yes. He was very important to our community. Very rich, like Ladrica say, full of wisdom. And I was blessed enough to get him in my later years. And he taught me so well. And I thank God for him. For all my sisters and brothers in Christ, I would ask that you all remember the good times, remember the conversations and life lessons he spoke. If you were ever privileged enough to hold a conversation with him, I'm sure you experienced one full of wisdom, knowledge, love, and understanding. Know that Frank had received the Lord as his personal savior. Amen. Know that he fought the good fight of faith. He finished his race and he kept the faith. Thank you for that beautiful crown. It was the only thing that I asked for in this ceremony because it was well deserved. And as beautiful as that crown is, I know it's nothing in comparison to the crown of glory that God will be placing on my brother. There's one impact scripture that I have here that comes to memory most of all. And I know pastor can attest to this. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Amen. I thank you, and I, I ask that you allow his life and legacy to be reflected before you and continue to pray for the family. Thank you for your time. Good morning, everybody. I came up here. Uh, my brother tagged me in, put me in the game. <laughs> um, my name is Diamond, and I was um, Frank was my father. Um, and I don't, not gonna take up time. Just want to thank everybody. Thank you, 
Mount Tron family. Thank you to Zion Hill family for allowing us to be here. Um, and um, thank you all so much. And keep us in your prayers. And if you think about us over the next coming weeks or months or whatever, don't um, hesitate to reach out because we appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and give it to How y'all doing today? First off, I want to thank y'all for coming, man. I was just celebrate this day, celebrate my home going to my father, man. You already know who he was, my dad. But to actually really see this thing unfold, man, was amazing to me. Uh, playing ball at Bringhurst in the major league, man. My daddy yelling, hooping, and hollering, coaching from the sideline, you know. So the coach, see the influence that he had on us, and he said, Mr. Frank, come down on the field. He came down on the field, he said, man, would you be willing to coach these boys? So they said we was a radical and, you know, we we was uh, need disciplinary and everything. So Nitta stepped up to the plate as he would. And uh, he took over, took over the team. He won three, three championships back to back. You know, yeah. this is this is what he did. You know, uh, what he what he doing to the youth with the youth. He also he, he did it with, with me. You know, so he instilled it. He instilled it in me. You know, uh, he was a pillar in the community. You know, very heavy man. You know. He wasn't gonna be tolerate no, you know, no BS at all. Not from me either, you know. And uh, I can remember, man, just like it was yesterday, man. I, me thinking I know everything. I just skipped school, y'all. You know, me and a few brothers and Mr. Steve Thompson, man. He seen me sprinting down the road, man. He say, man, that's Nitty Junior, man. Made the phone call. You know, I'm thinking I just slid by, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> Shoot, man. Bad news beat me home, man. <laughs> my, he got got my mama uh got in touch with him, you know, when he when he got off, man. Like I said, it's about seven or eight. Evening and got down, you know, I'm thinking I done slipped on by. So. <laughs> Everything all right. It must be all right. It's quiet. Well, oh, here come the stone. <laughs> well, he came in there, got the fussing and cussing and hooping and hollering. Me at that age, I'm in junior high. I think I'm think I'm, I'm think I'm grown. Why well, I did that? I stepped up <laughs> like I want to contest him. That man knocked me down, man. <laughs> My mama say, Frank, you gonna kill that boy. <laughs> say, no, he wanna be grown, you know. So, man, you know, my daddy, he wasn't gonna tolerate it, man. You know, he wasn't gonna tolerate that at all, man, you know. And uh, just because I was his son, he wasn't gonna uphold my wrongdoing. And that's what he was about, you know. And he's about doing the right thing, man, you know. Uh, my daddy was my friend, my brother. He was my everything, you know. Uh, that brick wall right there, I know I can't go through it. No, I can't go through it. But with him, oh, damn, boy, we going, we, go, we finna try, you know. <laughs> it wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing that, you know, he, I couldn't go to him with. Whatever I went to him with, he was gonna speak on it, but he was gonna speak the true facts, though, you know. He ain't going to cut no corners, man. Straight shooter, you know. It is what it is. And like the song say, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Understand me? Yeah. With him, you know. And uh, I'm going to really miss him, you know. Uh, the late calls, I call him at night, 1030. We on the phone at 230 in the morning. Phone and went dead. <laughs> Frank Jr., I got to charge up. You know, we running it about the game, everything, just a rundown, you know, and uh, 
I get quiet on the phone. I might say, Papa, man, I'm just running my day back, you know, uh, analyzing the day, you know, who I came in contact with, making sure I hadn't uh, did nothing wrong to anybody, you know. Uh, I want to right my wrongs if I did. I want tomorrow to be better than the day was, you know. He said, he said, son, that's that's how that go. You know, he taught me to uh, have, a, have a word, you know. Be a man of character, a man of substance. And that's that's what that's what he instilled in me, man, you know. So uh I just want to say, man, this is an eye opening for all of us, man. Uh this happened so fast to me, man, and uh his his spirit is with me right now, you know, as I do this, man, y'all. Feel like I'm on the mound, get ready for a big game, man, right now, you know. The championship, you know. But this is his last ride with me, man, and I really wanna, you know, let him know it's an honor to be his son. giving all praise and glory to God for allowing this body of individuals gathered here today in honor of my brother, y'all's brother, classmate, Teammate, fraternity, I can't leave out the special organization that we have amongst us. Y'all know who we are, the Dippers. That was Frank's nickname. That's what I call him. That's what he called me, Dipper. But we have some other dippers, y'all know who you are. And uh, if you know, if you knew Frank, you liked him, you loved him, you know. Uh, Lord have mercy. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. With this somber occasion, we are gathered to honor Frank Johnson, Sr. Frank Johnson, Senior, that's Frank Johnson, Jr. Uh, I loved Frank. I loved him. When I got the call, uh, I, I, I just, you know, I, I've been crying and crying and crying and I prayed to God that I could stay strong and not cry during this moment right here. <clears throat> you know, Frank was a guy that gave his all. And uh, I applaud him for 
coming out of the street when he gave his life to God because he going to tell you how he feel, what he feel, you know. He don't care how you feel about it. He going to tell you, you know. Sometimes we, we, we need people to tell us and say things, you know, to us. Keep you on your toes, you know. Um, one thing about Frank, right now at this very moment, there's no doubt in my mind and heart where he's at. He's sitting right side God right now telling him how you do this, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of guy Frank was, you know. That's the kind of guy he was. You know, I remember. See, we, uh, the founder, the founder of this team, the OJs, the founder is present, another brother of Frank's. And uh, we had some fun with that team. Yeah. Uh, From the beginning to the end, in the end, championship. Yeah. Uh, we nicknamed ourselves the Fabulous OJ. Yeah. And uh, Frank, third baseman. Now, during the team, we, we, we changed different positions with different people, but never at third. The Dipper played third, you know. Uh, love you, Dipper. Yeah. Uh, so, as sad and somber as this occasion is, this is the home going for a great guy, a very great dynamic guy. Yeah. Dipper, we here for you, Dipper. Your friend, your classmates, your fraternity, them OJs and Dippers. Yeah. We love you. You're going to be missed. Oh, boy, but the memories, man, you left for. Ooh-wee! God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. If you don't love kids, you don't need to coach. Because what you're doing is you're molding young men and young ladies to be prepared for adulthood. I can tell you this, from Jones Street, Peabody, and Gramlin, there lies not a good man, but a great man, a good role model. None of us are perfect. But I want you to know this. You probably already do. If Frank had something, you could get it. Okay? I'm going to tell you a little story. We were walking to practice, me, Frank, and Spradley. We stopped by the store and picked up some little the snacks, you know, the treats, and eat on the way to practice, right? Well, we just get them little rubbo cookies and, uh, you know, little now ladles or whatever. You know, we try we could eat it before we got there so we didn't have all that sweet. Well, anyway, 
Frank kept chewing. We got by True Vine, and Nitty say, uh, man, he say, y'all have finished already, huh? Spadley say, no, you holding back. <laughs> <laughs> Frank had taken some cookies and crumbled them in his pocket. <laughs> well, we had already eaten ours. He'd fish him out and throw him down a little bit. So Spadley said, man, what's going on? So we tackled him. Frank had cookie crumbs <laughs> in his pockets or whatever. But those are the kind of days that uh, we think about and we truly miss. I tell the kids right now, I help coach baseball and football at Peabody. I tell the kids all the time, from the P to the G. And from the G, get your D. They understand that. I know a lot of people would have loved to walk to this funeral or ride their bicycles to this funeral because that's a community dude right there. That's where we came from, and that's who we are. I want to thank everyone that's present today, and I would love for the class of 1973 Peabody War Horses to stand if possible. I would also like for all of the war horses and rattlers to stand. And of course, those Gremlin Tigers. Yeah. So Frank Jr., I did that roll call for you, son. I talked with you the other day and I told you, you're not in this journey or in this fight by yourself. Trust me. Know that we are here for you and the family, Miss Pam, Vera, all of you all. Because we are part of that nation. That's who we are. Call me, get in contact with any of us, and we'll let you know where we stand. God bless everyone that's it available here that's here today. Thank you guys for coming out and celebrate this homegoing celebration for Nitty. You know, we came through that era too before I go. We had nicknames. A lot of people remember your nickname and didn't know your real name. <laughs> you know? But we did what we had to do because we answered to all of them, all the names. And I'd like to thank the coaches that coached us growing up they elevated us to a level of responsibility, and they gave us a lot of discipline. Little did we know what they were doing. They were grooming us for moments like this. Frank would always speak for the class. A lot of times when we'd have homegoings and classmates would transition, well, sometimes you had to pass the torch. And we would do this together Love you guys. Thank you guys. God bless you, your family members, and everybody else that's involved. Great job, Frank Jr. Outstanding. <laughs> yes, indeed. For well, y'all don't know, my name is Keith Hills, and uh, me and Frank talk on the regular, man. We've been on the phone for hours, man. <laughs> My wife said, well, he talking to Nitty. So uh, I've come to the family and I asked him to do a tribute to Frank. And so that's what it says. Tribute to Frank, Frank Nitty Johnson, the game. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the game. We are broadcast to you live from Heavenly Stadium with Frank Nitty Heaven Angels versus Satan, Evil Empire Demons. My name is Keith K. Roy Hills, and I'm here with my all-around athlete, Steve Tump Thompson. So, Tump, 
What do you think will happen today's game? Well, Ross going to be a dog fight. <laughs> Satan evil demons are just dead. Evil, all is all get off. They have a pitcher who has an arsenal of pitchers. He's got lust, jealousy, envy, discard among breathing, a proud look, adultery, hatred, confusion. And that's just the name of fruit. But he has one pitch that is so bad, I know that one tongue, it's sin. And he could throw with all the other pitches together. This lineup has demons in every position. So what do you think Needed needs to be to, for vic, vic, victory? Jesus. You have to stick somebody on these demons that knows what to do. You are so right, Tom. So who has to be Nitty's star lineup? Well, Roy, Nitty has a championship lineup himself. Tom, you played with him, so I guess I'll let you introduce these guys. Well, Roy, you got Robert Franklin Smiley catching, Greg Howard at first, Calvin Celestine at second, John Johnson at shortstop, Joseph Matthews at third, athlete, T Rock in left field, Jerry Eli in center field, Anthony DuPont in right field, and Alfred Rashia ace in the hole. You know what, Roy? Frank told me something one day, well, he told me too. He said when he first uh, faced Alfred Rashia, you know, he could throw that ball too. So the first pitch he threw me raw, I hit it out the park. Pow! Yeah. You know what he did the next pitch? He hit you. Yeah, he hit me. You <laughs> sure right he hit me. That's what he did. <laughs> so before I go into front of the top, I have to introduce to our sideline reporters. We have Marjorie, that's my dog, Brawl, reporting on the heavenless angel side. And Robert Buck Cover on the evil demon side. So, dog, what's going on, on your side? Well, Keith and Steve, it is so loud over here. You got a lot of glory, hallelujah, amen, and thank you, Jesus. I also have been told that Frank has a secret weapon that he's going to release in the bottom of the ninth inning. Back to you guys in the booth. Tom, were you able to get the book? No, Roy, I can't get him. I keep calling him, but he don't answer. Tom, I just heard the, the umps say play ball. What do you think Ned's best pitch will be? Today, as he takes the moon, the moon Roy, Nitty has to bring that heater, a continuous dose of Jesus all the time. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Tom. So now, as it gets to the bottom of the third inning, Roy, the bottom of the third, Nitty has failed to throw a strike, for failed to throw a ball. He's thrown nine up and nine down, all strikes. I seen him warming up, he looked like his old Peabody at Grambling days. That reminds me, Tom, when he was at Grambling, and I was at his office one day, at Central, Central State Hospital, and he had an article on his desk that said the perfect picture. Uh, he went, I think, 13 and 0 that season. But he said to me, Roy, that didn't let me pitch in the SWAC championship game, and that hurt it. Roy, we are in the bottom of the six now. Score still 0 0. Let's check in on our, our colleagues. Margin, what you got? Well, Steve, they are still loud here with Jesus, 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 Jesus. The game goes on. Back to you. Thanks, Margie. Buck, can you get, get in contact with Buck? Still no answer from Buck. Tom, bottom of the night. Bases loaded. Nitty up to bat. Full count. He just called a timeout. Looks like he's praying. Now he's up doing some type of dance. Dancing like David dance in a language I can't understand. Must be the secret weapon. That must be the Holy Spirit he, he has on him. He steps to the plate. Here's the pitch. It's a long fly ball to deep center field. Going, 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 still going. That's a Jesus suit in there. That, no one knows where this going to land. Hold up, Roy. Buck is on the line. Buck, come in. Where you at? Man, I'm in a tub of cold ice. Where have you been? In hell. Them <laughs> demons would not do an interview unless it was in hell. It said, it's so hot down now. I looked around for some atheists, but there wasn't none in there. Why? Because when they get down there, they believe. <laughs> Back to you. So, ladies and gents, Frank Nitty has hit a grand slam into the book of life where he's the heavenly bound, and that concludes your ball game. Thank you.
any favor that I didn't deserve from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same to our beloved pastor, Reverend Andrew Harris, to the bereaved family who I consider as my family too. Frank and I was in covenant together and whatever belonged to him belonged to me. Uh, to the clergies also that have assembled here today to visit and friends and special, a special greetings to those who faithfully carry the banner of the gospel of Jesus Christ. to the bereaved family, and I will address you again. It's a privilege and an honor to present you a word of comfort. Now, I know this is a hard saying for such a time as this, but don't worry. Be happy. I know that's a hard saying because after Frank left, he really left what you call a void or an emptiness within me. And I know it. Also within the family and those who love them. The only thing that can fill this void or this emptiness is time. And that's what I want to talk about. Season. In time. Uh, you must listen intensively because I believe this is a word of comfort. Because every last one of us, this is a replica uh -huh. for every living human here today. Let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes. I want to just anchor for momentarily for on these two scriptures. Hold this for a minute. It is a book of Ecclesiastes. Now let me explain this book. I 
I call it a sarcastic piece of literature, full of sarcasm. It, a book that written in the positive, but it means the negative. It is written from a fleshy conception. Every man, every man in the flesh will have to go through this. Solomon knew this well. So, a book, the book of Ecclesiastes, as I said, is a sarcastic piece of literature full of sarcasm. It takes all that a man can accomplish outside of God. And it put it in one lump sum and it just made fun of it. It just laughs at it. Uh, Paul described this as one who beat the wind or uh, one who's shadow boxing. Now, Shakespeare tells a story about a man who don't know why. Uh, this is the way he put it. Uh, it's Macbeth. Scene 5, line 25. He said, life is but a walking shadow. A poor, play, a poor player who struts and fret his hour upon the stage. Then he's heard no more. Is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. It's a, this is what he's saying in plain old miracle vernacular. He's saying, here's a man who saying a lot of things, but he's really not saying nothing. He's making a lot of movement, but he's really not going nowhere. Is this a replica? A Perfect portrait of a sinner? Yes, it is. Without God, you cannot accomplish anything. Anything. Because the life is in Jesus. Let's put away all preconceived ideas and let the word of God speak for himself. In John 5, 40, Jesus said, You will not come unto me that you might have life. Here is again in John 25 and 26. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth upon me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth shall never die. Frank believed that with all of his heart. Oh, yeah. And here is again in John 20, 30 and 31. Many things truly that Jesus did in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these, or this is written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Frank knew this well. This journey is not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes says it is a, a season and time for everything under the heaven. Oh, yeah. This is Frank's season. Everybody has a season in here. Every fleshly man has a season. Every fleshly man has a season. You have a season in time. Now, let me express to you what time is. Whenever I understand something, I can con my own phrase. Listen to me. Time. The Lord went from A to Z and he put it over here. He took it out eternal and he called it time. Now, the most ironic thing about time is in time, everything changes. Nothing stays the same. The young become the old, mystery do unfold. Listen to me. Listen to me clear. Clear. Frank knew this. Frank and I were studied by this. Every time you see us together, we were speaking about biblical things and we were into the scriptures. Listen to me. The average man will live a lifetime. Will live a lifetime and never find a friend. But I was lucky. I didn't only find a friend I found two friends in my lifetime. Now, a friend will stick closer than a brother. P. 
people knew of Frank, but I knew his mind. Lord Jesus. Yes. Listen to me very closely. This is a word of comfort to the family. You will see him again if you march behind him. Frank is in heaven with Jesus. You will see him again if you follow him. Listen to me very closely. Frank will be back. Frank knew this. First Thessalonians 4, 16, said, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Frank, and wish that is alive, we should be caught up to meet him in air, and so shall we be with the Lord. Now let us comfort one another with these saying. Thank you very much. And for this cause, I cease not to pray for Frank family and everybody that, are, that have a similar here today. I cease not to pray for you that everyone in here will be enlightened in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and all spiritual wisdom and understanding that we all might walk worthy of the Lord according to all that is pleasing, that we be fruitful in every good works, that we give thanks unto the Father who have made us meek to be partaken of the inheritance of the saints in light whom we have redemption through his blood. Thank you. Now, I'd like to address the family, and then I will take my seat. Reverend Arthur Armstead, who's in Lafayette, he sent his sympathy. He couldn't make it because he's, he's uh, wrestling with cancer. He wanted to be here tonight, but he just couldn't make it. And I thank you to Frank Sibilance and all the family. I'm just a phone call away. Frank and I was in covenant. And whatever belonged to him, belonged to me. Now, if you, if you ever need me, I'm a phone call away. Thank you. Praise God, praise God. We're going to ask those that are not in the family. Would you stand, please? And we prepare to hear the word from the Lord.
how great is our God. Our Father, how we thank thee that thou art the great God, that thou art the comforter, that you are a consoler, that you are, dear Master, a heart fixer and a mind regulator. And we acknowledge that what appears to be defeat, but that which is actually victory that you are great and we celebrate this occasion of a great man in the person of Frank Johnson and God we thank you for the scriptures that have been read prayers prayed Zion song sang but it's preaching time now, dear Master, and we pray that you would, Lord, within the deep depths of the revelation of this thy word, that thou people might be edified, this family may be comforted, and that you and you alone might be glorified. It is in the marvelous and matchless name of Jesus the Christ we do pray, and the people of God said together, amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. to the angel of this house. Pastor Joshua Jardar to all of the reverend clergy who are here as a cadre of cross carriers. To the officers and members of the Mount Triumph Baptist Church, the class, Peabody class of 1973 the soul brothers and my list is endless but my time is not and certainly to this bereaved family Frank Jr., Negrika, Tiffany, Vera, Garrett, Travis, Andrew, Diamond, the entire Ford family and certainly last but not least to uh, Pamela Ford who Frank called his ride or die woman Frank said, Pastor, she can hold it down when I can't. And if I missed anyone, charge it to my head and not to my heart, especially you heard Reverend Frank, Reverend uh, Baker doing his uh, words of comfort. He, he struggled a little bit because of the infinity and the affection that he has for Frank. There was no closer person outside of Coach Bowman and, and the Baker family at Mount Triumph with Frank. To the Grambling State University alumni. Today, we come to this sacred sanctuary at this solemn hour not to mourn but to bid farewell to my friend, a real dude, a man who loved all of his children on both sides, who loved his church, who loved to teach Bible Sunday school, a man who never met a stranger, who was the life of the party. And, and when I look at the Bible in its entirety, it reminds me of Jacob. Jacob, a man of the street. Jacob, a man of, uh, who was known as a trickster, but 
He wrestled with God and God called him a prince. Before I get into my text, let me just tell you this about Frank. Yeah, I've heard so many stories, so I'm going to just get to the text here. Frank is the only man at Mount Triumph who made the church conference room the headquarters for Cheatham Park Athletic Association. <laughs> Frank kept it real, so can I be real this morning? In my office, he ate up all the snacks, he drank all the coffee. And when somebody else came in, Frank said, Pastor, look here, we're going to be real here. We got this. Uh, uh, fix some more coffee. Everybody laughing because they know it's the truth. So today, while this family may be pained by his departure, you can rejoice in his destination. And though you may be wounded and weary and baffled and bruised and bereaved, you as a family in totality, both families, the Ford family, and as well as the Johnson family, you are not guilty. For if love could have kept Frank here, we would not be here today. So I publicly applaud both Vera and Pam Ford and their families. And especially Pam, and who knew Frank Nitty's fame, who knew Frank Nitty's faults, but who loved him yet the more. Frank didn't have long funerals, so we're going to get to the text. For those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Job, chapter 7, verse 4, where you will find these words. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise and the night be gone? And I am full of tossing to and fro until the dawning of a new day. I believe that's enough. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. I like to use for a text to preach Frank's homegoing celebration. When will this nightmare be over? When will this nightmare be over. As a child, we've always uh, had dreams and, and sometimes that, that, that our dreams will turn into a nightmare only to have a mother or a father come into our room to color us, to comfort us, to console us, and to reassure us that our nightmare is over and that everything will be all right. In our text this afternoon, the question that arises uh, in the text is, when will this nightmare be over? When will the tears stop falling? When will my heart stop pounding? When will my mind stop wondering what I would have, could have, or should have done? When will the lightning of my soul stop flashing and the thunder stop roaring within me? When will my head stop hurting? When will this nightmare be over? For those of us who are familiar with the text and the book and the, and the man that, that bears his name, Job, we are certain that when Job is writing this text, he, he, his, his mind is in a nightmarish situation. For you see, Job, uh, Brother Frank, he, he finds himself in a throne of a plethora of problems. He is beset 
by one calamity after another. He finds himself unable to eat a bite, unable to sleep at night. He finds himself tossing and turning through the night and waiting for the dawn of a new day. He finds himself in a nightmarish situation. Oh, let me tell you this here. You can have a nightmare at noonday. When, when, when the doctor comes in and says, there's nothing else that he could do, and you're there with your loved one, you are in a nightmarish situation. When death comes and snatches away the person that we love, that, that we look up to, that we admire, and it appears as though we are robbed of our opportunity to say goodbye, we are in a nightmarish situation. You see, Frank loved the Lord. Frank was a man who, who could converse with, with kings and governors and, and at the same time get on the letter on the level with a gangbanger, a thug, and a hoolum, and both of them would listen to him because he had street creds, he had book sense, he most of all he had the spirit of the Lord, and he knew how to get along with Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. You see, Frank loved uh, God. He loved Mount Triumph. He loved his pastor. He loved teaching Bible study. He had a thing with Coach Bowman. He, he would tell me all the time, he said, I would never be the person who I'm supposed to be had Coach, Bogan, Coach uh, uh, Bowman not intervened in my life. You see, all of us, we play church well. We put on a face and we smile when our heart is broken. But with Frank, I, I think Frank Jr. said it best. What you see is what you get. But even when he found himself in a nightmare situation, he, he, he understood that if I could just hold on to God's unchanging hand, God will make a way somehow. And, and I, I commend this family to the Lord. I commend Jesus to you. I'll tell you that when all of this is over, you will have your moments. You will have your time. You will be driving down the highway one day and tears will start falling from your eyes. You will drive to where he used to live one day and you'll pull up to the address and say, Lord, what's wrong with me? My daddy is gone. How can I tell you that? Because I've sat where you sat. How can I tell you that? Because I've been through what you're going through. How can I tell you that? Because I know what it's like to, to, to bury a mother, a father, sisters, and two brothers, nieces, and nephews, and, and still have to stand behind this sacred desk and hold it all together. When your heart is broken, I know about nightmarish situations. And you see, you see, you see, uh, Job, Job, he was in a nightmarish situation, Job. He was in a situation whereby everything that man counts worthy and gives him a, a stain, Job lost them all. The Bible says he had 7,000 sheep gone, 7,000 camels gone, 500 yoke of oxen gone, 500 she asses gone, his magnanimous reputation and odds gone, his health and his wealth is gone, even the affection and the affinity of a wife was gone, and Job still fell to his knees even after a lost ten children and he said the Lord give it the Lord take it away blessed be the name of the Lord oh I got a question for you this morning will you still worship him when you want it will you still give him praise when your heart is broken 
Will you give him praise when you say, save daddy. And God, in his infinite wisdom and his divine sovereignty, decide to take him anywhere. Can you still say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. See, that's the type of faith that Brother Frank had. You know, Frank, like Job, knew what it's like to love and to lose. But most of all, through it all, he trusted and he believed in God. And most of all, and I'm going to give you these two things and I'm out of here. We're done. Frank understood, number one, the reality of death. Secondly, he understood the rudeness of death. And finally, Frank was ready for death. The reality of death. You see, Reverend Baker, death is a reality. We are here today, and old folks used to say, we are gone tomorrow. But the fact of the matter is, we are here today, and we are gone today. Death is a reality. We all will die. Some way, someday, we all will be rolled in here on time and somebody will view us. There's seven billion people right now on planet Earth. And when a hundred years roll around from here today, Nearly all seven billion will be gone. Why? Because you see, what we call dying, it's really God telling us that what we call dying to God is merely our spirits changing, addresses moving from earth to heaven. And God has Many exchanges and transitional purposes in order to get us to him. Translators, if you will, according to Alexander Pope, he said that God sometimes uses cancer. Sometimes he'll use high blood pressure. Sometimes he'll lose car wreck. Sometimes he'll use a stroke, a heart attack, and COVID-19. But we will all transition someday, some way. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, John Doe, and the CEO will die. Every minute, 60 people die. Every minute, 60 people die. Every hour, 3,600 people die. Every day, 86,400 people We are dying every day and death is a reality. And, and like the Apostle Paul, a, a, a Frank understood to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Frank understood that we all have an appointment with death. You see down here we can reschedule all the appointments we want when they don't fit into our time and purpose. But when death comes, knocking on our doors, that's an appointment that we could not and cannot reschedule. You see, before Frank was ever born, God knew how he would die, when he would die, under the circumstances in which he would transition and go to heaven. I can see that death is a reality a little better now. But secondly, there's a rudeness of death. You know, nature has its seasons. Spring, summer, winter, and fall. But death, it can come at any time. For my mother, it came on St. Patrick's Day. For my nephew, it came the day after Christmas. Death 
can come on your birthday. Death can come and Thanksgiving or Christmas. You see, why can it come on those unexpected times? Because death takes no vacation. Death has no holidays. And that's the rudeness of death. It's rude because it does not give us warning. You heard one of the family members say it was unexpected. Death gives us the warning. That's why it's important that we treat everybody right. That's why it's important that we get along with everybody. That's why it's important that, that men like Frank, who, who, who used to be out there but came in, and when he came in, he went all the way in with God. He did not have a half-stepping or lukewarm relationship with God. Uh, Frank Jr. said it best. What you see is what you got when you met Frank Johnson. Yes, and lastly, Brother Ron, I'm getting ready to get out of here. There was a readiness yes. to Frank Jr.'s death or to Frank Sr.'s death. He was prepared. You see, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Oh, y'all getting quiet on that here. <laughs> Sister Franklin, I didn't see you over there, but, 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 but let me help him. He says that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. You see, Frank knew who Jesus was. Frank uh, left here serving, and most of all, he left here saved. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to take my seat. Frank followed Jesus. He didn't follow nobody because how much money they had. He didn't follow nobody or respect nobody for what kind of creature comforts they had. He followed Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me in here. He didn't follow Oprah Winfrey or Tyler Perry or Tyler Banks or Beyonce or Steve Harvey or Chris Rock or Chris Brown or Nashante or Alicia Keys or Ludacris or Kendrick Lamar or Eminem or Kanye West and Outkast or 50 Cent or Karma or Lil Wayne or Tiny or T.I. or T-Pain or Lil Wayne or Ben's Cooley, Rick Ross, the big boss. He did not follow Mary J. Blige or Snoop Doggy Dogg or Bow Wow or Andre 3000. He didn't follow a joker y'all call a walker, a flocker in a flame. He followed Jesus. Now I got a question for you as I take my seat. Who are you following? I said, who are you following? If you following Jesus, why don't you stand on your feet and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I come to celebrate today. Say, neighbor, Oh, y'all ain't ready. Say, neighbor, Frank was too blessed to be stressed. Frank was uh, too anointed to be disappointed. Uh, Frank was uh, too saved uh, to be enslaved. Uh, he was too grateful uh, to be hateful. Uh, he was too rooted uh, in the word of God uh, to be disputed. Uh, he was too empowered uh, to be a coward. Uh, you see, uh, when I think uh, about the goodness of God uh, and all uh, he's done for me, uh, my soul uh, cries out hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Because you see, uh, when I think uh, about Frank, uh, his faith uh, reminds me of Abraham. Uh, his ministry uh, reminds me of Moses. Uh, his work uh, reminds me of Nehemiah. His devotion uh, reminds me of David. Uh, when I think uh, about Frank, uh, his wisdom uh, reminds me of Solomon. Uh, his service uh, reminds me of Samuel. Uh, ain't he all right? Oh, y'all ain't come to pray today. Uh, 
why don't we celebrate uh, who we really was? Uh, and can I tell you this? Uh, his love uh, reminds me of Jesus. Uh, because you see, uh, everybody uh, that Frank met, uh, they loved him. Uh, can I tell you, uh, he loved Jesus. Uh, do you love Jesus uh, like Frank did? Uh, do you know him? Uh, what's his name? I said, what's his name? His name is Jesus. Fire can't burn him. Numbers can't count him. Water can't drown him. Answers can't agony him. It bumps, it bruises, but his name is Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let me tell you something about Frank Dated and I'm gone. Frank Nader believed that Abraham was Adam's friend. He believed that Jesus was Noah's ark. He believed that, that God would take care of him. Not just in this life, but in the life to come. He believed that he would say, Reb, you know, you preach sometime. And he said, Reb, when I fall, I know Jesus is going to lift me. When I sin, Reb, I know he's going to forgive me. When I'm weak, I know he's going to strengthen me. He said, when I'm broke, he's my treasure chest. He's my priceless possession. And I just want to say to this family, Frank Jr., I know he's proud of you. There's some pre some sermon as a pastor you're preaching is very hard because you're grieving yourself. When I would be on the highway driving back from visiting a sick member in Houston, getting back two o'clock in the morning, getting sleepy on the road. I get a phone call and I look down there and all I could do was, was smile. And he said, Pastor, what you doing, kid? He said, I know you're on that road, man. I'm calling to check on you. And y'all done heard it said so many times here. Frank would stay on the phone. He said, man, I know you're tired. You've been running all day. You always have everybody else back, but I got your back. And he had everybody's back. He looked out for everybody. He would take the little that he had and he would give it to everybody. Do you know that these seats, these streets are much more dangerous because Frank Johnson is not there because he had baseball fields. He had basketball camps. He gave all that he had. When I think about what he did with what he had, he still amazes me. And he never was down. He was the same person. If he had $5,000 in his pocket or $5 in his pocket, he would always smile. He was always uh, uplifting. And as a pastor, I'm going to tell you, everybody that you pastor ain't good. Some of my members saying, real, being messy now. There's some hellions. But this was my friend. And you can't always call all your members your friends. But this was my friend. never had a disagreement. Never pass a word. What a joy it is to pastor people. 
So many people take and they take and they take and they take. And Frank was different because he poured and he poured and he poured until nothing was left of himself. As the funeral directors come, stay together as one family. Stay on one accord. Frank loved both of these families just the same. They were all his children. Whether they were biological or not, they were his children. And not just these children, but in the city of Alexandria and throughout Pineville, all of them were Frank children. Family, if you need me, you know my number, you know where I am. Uh, the Mount Trial Baptist Church stands ready to assist you. Uh, we love him and we will miss him dearly. Thank you and God bless you and you in the hands of our funeral director. Amen. Let us put our hands together for the life and the legacy of our beloved brother. For it is a life well lived, a rest well earned. Family, just know God makes no mistakes. And if you hold to his unchanging hand, he will see you through. At this time, we are preparing to journey to the Mount Triumph Baptist Church Cemetery here in the city of Pineville. We're going to ask those of you that will be driving your personal vehicles to drive with your headlights and flashers on and do drive with caution at a safe but close distance. We will be escorted out by our ministers. After the ministers, it will be our pallbearers. After the pallbearers, it will be our beloved family. Uh, after the family, it will be all those friends that have come to celebrate life today. At this time, let us all stand and pray to recess. Say 